Hey everyone, today I'm going to share with you something that has completely changed my morning. Yes, I'm talking about AI and how it helps streamlining my YouTube content consumption. You know that feeling when you wake up, grab your phone, and bam, you are instantly distracted by all the notifications. I used to scroll through YouTube for hours, getting lost in the habit hole with endless shiny video while trying to find what I should be watching. This AI automation has been helping cutting the distraction. So, here how it works. Picture this. Every morning, I wake up, pour myself a nice cup of coffee, and before I even open YouTube, an email lands in my inbox. A curated list of videos available for me to watch right into it, meaning I don't have to open YouTube anymore, and so I'm cutting the distraction. I maintain a list of channels on Airtable, which I want AI to analyze and automatically curate a list of trending videos and even suggest content that align with my interest. It's like having a personal assistant who knows exactly what I want to watch. But why is this important? Distraction in the morning can derail your entire day. When I used to get caught up scrolling through endless video, it felt like I lost hours of productivity. Let's face it, who hasn't found themselves one minute watching a tutorial and two hours in discovering a conspiracy theory? We live in a world overflowing with content, especially in AI, where new shiny objects come and go daily. It's all about finding what matters to us and filtering out the noise. That's exactly what this daily automation is doing for me. My name is Quentin, your friendly AI automation freelancer, and I'm super excited as I have actually opened my own school community. I cannot be more hyped. When you join, you'd get access to my special blueprint, small byte content, and much more. We offer amazing support, including co-build and support call with me. You're also free to build at your own speed. I have created an easy to follow interactive guide for each blueprint, which shows you step by step on how to rebuild the automation. There is no chance you can miss it. Plus, you'll have exclusive app access for our community members. The latest I'm working on is called The Vault, a prompt library for the community that I'll be releasing soon. Let's dive into the build now and see how this productivity AI automation works. All right, we are now actually back into Make. If you've downloaded the blueprint into or from the school, all you have to do is actually click on the three dots down below, import the blueprint, and you actually have this uh, appearing on your screen. If you haven't, we're gonna actually build this together. I'm gonna go through each of the modules step by step, uh, and I'm gonna explain what it does. I'm gonna also put a link uh, of the Airtable on the description down below. Here is the Airtable where basically I maintain the channel link and the channel ID. Before we can actually uh, carry on with the automation, we need to actually put the link of the channel itself. So we would actually, I would also put the link in the description. You can actually use this uh, website to find the channel ID. We need to actually grab the channel ID. And the reason is simple. I would actually explain that to the words toward the uh, automation. And so this information, this number here is important. We want to actually keep this information over there and put it into on top of the URL, right? We want to have actually the channel ID as well. Once you've done this, we're going to actually go ahead with the Airtable first. We're going to map the Airtable. So basically, you're going to have to search for your table. In this case, if you copy my base, it's going to be named YouTube Lookup. And on the table itself, you actually have to choose your table ID, obviously, which is actually the name of your table. We would actually output the field, channel link and channel ID. And I've actually put a limitation of 40. In this case, I have actually 23 channels that I'm watching. So uh, I'm never going to pass this limit. Once you're done, you just have actually finished your first module. And we're basically going to go and use this RSS module over there, which will, and this is the reason of the channel ID, is that we are going through youtube.com feeds, basically, and we're returning the XML from the channel ID that we want. And so if I'm pasting this, I'm getting actually all the information from the channel itself, right? So that's why, and so this is actually called RSS because it's an XML file. And so that's actually the reason why we have the channel ID. We have to capture the channel ID on Airtable. Out of each of the channel, I'm actually returning two, uh, two items. That's important uh, to keep in mind. If you would actually put, for example, 10, that means that let's say you have actually 20, 20 channels that you're watching. You have actually returning 10 of those items. Each time you run this automation, this is going to cost you 200 cost operation. This blueprint costs 50 cost operation to run daily. I'm running this once a day. I'm going to explain and show you how to do that as well. 
I just wanted to put that out there just in case you are actually mindful of your credit for cost operation. We're then gonna actually add a text aggregator over here. And basically what the text aggregator does, it's allowing me to aggregate the entire, making an array basically, where I say, okay, I want to return the titles and the titles is actually coming from the RSS. You see, because I've actually, we have this information available from the XML, I could enhance if I wanted to. I could actually go to the title, the URL of the video, the author, and a short description uh, as well available. We're gonna have actually the view as well, the amount of view at the time of the release of the video. So this way we are getting actually an email with a table available with all this information back to you. Once you have the text aggregator, what I wanna do is I wanna aggregate one more and I wanna actually return this all in one piece. The reason why I'm aggregate, aggregating this together again is because these two modules here grab me two items for each of the channel, right? And now once this is done, I'm actually bundling everything back into one text aggregator where now I can actually call OpenAI to give me the information that I wanted or compile the table basically that I wanted. So in this case, we have actually, uh, I'm using actually GPT-40 in this case. I could actually potentially use GPT-40 mini. Um, this automation has been running for a couple of months and that's why I'm actually using GPT-40. I could actually change to GPT-40 mini. It just works, I'm, I'm letting running as we speak. So here's the prompt. You are helping uh, the user with a YouTuber and you're supposed to provide the most recent uploaded video and the video has actually been posted within 24 hours. Please respond with an HTML table uh, of your answer with the following column. Titles, URL, author, video description, publish date, publish time, and a view. I'm only actually asking it to return only the video within the 24 hours. I wanna have actually the URL needed to be anchor tag uh, with a button click me. That's actually important over there. I'm, I'm gonna explain you why. And the video description need to be a summary in 200 characters. And here is actually what I'm passing through. I'm actually asking uh, here is the table I'm passing through the system, right? So the system now, so I give some example. And here is the text you need your, the, to use for the table. This is the reason why this is important that I, I need to bundle everything back. So this darker area means that I can, I'm, I'm bundling everything together, right? And then I, I'm actually bundling the output. So I have one output to pass and this is the reason why I'm passing over here. So I just wanted to put it out there, just explain why I have actually double text aggregator over there. Right. Once you've done, click on OK over there, and now we're gonna go and move to the send email uh, module. I'm sending an email to myself, so I'm not worried about draft in this case, I'm sending that straight to my inbox. Here's my TVC email address that I'm passing to, the subject recently uploaded video, and now I'm using this inbuilt function. If there is actually one thing you need to take away from this video is this replace function. Basically, ChatGPT often return markdown formatting, right? So the code is formatted into a markdown, which is actually the triple backtick over there, those tick over there that you see, and then HTML. What I'm doing here is that I'm using a replace function and I'm searching for the results from ChatGPT and anything that's actually, anything that the system find with backtick HTML is actually removed with empty string. This empty string function is available as a built-in module or built-in function in Make. Very important, very useful over there. That's basically just a string that you don't see. It's a character that you not, cannot see on the screen and actually basically it's replaced. If you found backtick HTML on the prompt, it will actually remove, it will actually be scrapped and will actually, would be white, would be empty, it's an empty string. And so again, you can find it into the text built-in function on Make, and you can actually click on the empty string over there. That's actually how the automation work. I'm gonna show you now the uh, final result. Here's the result of the video, the emails that I'm actually usually receiving. As you see, I left over there, so I've actually updated this scenario uh, since uh, I created back two months ago. I didn't have this actually markdown uh, concept over there. That's why you see it with actually the backtick HTML. Tomorrow is going to be fixed, so my new email is going to be received tomorrow without those information over there. But as you see, I can literally click on the video In within, this video, I'm gonna within actually my inbox. I don't have to go to YouTube and I have a curated list over there. I have actually short as well if I wanted to. 
and I have actually uh, the information over there. I can also click on that video. In this video, I'm gonna and share- I can then actually see it right away on YouTube if I wanted to. Last but not least, I'm gonna show you where the, like how do I run this once a day, for example. Instead of actually running this every 15 minutes, what you can click is you can go to run the scenario. So I click on the every 15 minutes. I you run the scenario at every day. And then I'm choosing the time, choosing the time. In this case, I want to run this at, let's say, 6.30, for example. I'm going to click on save. And in this case, after you tested your scenario, you can actually activate the scenario if you want it. And congratulations, this scenario will actually analyze your channel and send you a daily email at 6.33 a.m. every morning, or every day, I should say. I hope you found this video helpful. Please press once, once you finish the automation, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.